Welcome to Crafting with Laurel. Today we're going to be making coasters and we're going to do the stitch in the ditch. We are going to do the stitch in the ditch. Alright, here's some coasters that I just finished. And you, all you do is stitch in the ditch. And it stiffens your rope or your product by stitching in the ditch it makes it nice and stiff and it gives it a cool look well hi we're gonna do some stitching in the ditch in the ditch it's hard for me to say i got two teeth missing <laughs> well hello how are you See my stitching in the ditch? It makes your coasters nice and stiff. <clears throat> and it's hard to move. All right, so we're going to do this with the bandana fabric. How is everyone? How is everyone? I got some uh, bandana fabric here. It's not a real bandana. Uh, it's a print. Um, this is just a scrap piece I have. About a fat eighth I would say. Um, to make a coaster four inches my measurements are um, 75 inches. 75 inches. Well, hello. Hi. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning. Mary, Sharon, Sharon, Mary, Mary, what'd you say? Love watching me. Texas. Hi, Carol. Good morning. We're going to be making coasters and I'm going to do the stitch in the ditch. And that's what the stitch in the ditch looks like. Stitching in the ditch, you can get a little cross-eyed it. <laughs> um, when you want to stop for a minute, put your needle down and, you know, look up, look around. Because um, if you go off kilter, like I did on right there, can you see it? I kind of wiggle wiggled it. But it happens. It's kind of harder when you do the center. So how is everyone? All right, I already started my coil. I like to do, whoops, I like to do the star shape in the middle. <clears throat> Here, let me zoom in for you. Don't mind my fingernails, I still hadn't done them. All right, here we go. We're going to stitch a straight stitch. I'm using white. No, I'm not. I'm using a, a light tan color thread. I need to change my needle, but it's not giving me any difficulties. So guess what? Laurel keeps using it. When it starts uh, skipping stitches or nesting underneath you usually need a new uh, needle I'm using a uh, 16 jean needle I cut my threads all right so I'm getting ready to back stitch now you can put your needle down I I'm pretty good at it now without doing that you turn it a little bit and you go forward I find that it connects all your rope better and you don't get little peekaboo holes. Um, but you can do a T shape or X. Turn it, go forward. But everybody does something different. This is the way I like to do it. It's not a perfect star, but hey. It's nice and secure. 
Alright, so now I'm going to zigzag. Now I want to pick it, my foot up and position it. You want your needle to hit in the middle of this rope and in the middle of this rope as you go around. That'll help you determine where your needle needs to be. My saw machine doesn't have a, a number dial. Alright, I'm using a baby lock. Baby Lot Pro Line. She's a little picky when it comes to thickness, but she's a good sewing machine, especially for $25. <laughs> I got it at an estate sale. The lady was a quilter that had the sewing machine. Alright, zigzagging. But you want your needle to hit in the middle of each row of your rope here. So you're connecting and sewing your rope together. I go slow the first few rounds and then I'll speed it up. I'm going to measure three and a half inches. Like I said, the length of the rope, um, mine is 75 inches and that makes a four inch coaster. finally measured something y'all but I'm um, thinking about making sets or kits I should say to make coasters let me know what you think about that and I'll put them in my Etsy shop um, and then I'll have maybe a referral to the YouTube channel that shows you how to make them let me know your thoughts on that I could pick out some real cute fabric I think batiks would be beautiful um, but yeah I was thinking about that I went for a job interview this morning um, I gotta come back tomorrow. They could have told me that. <laughs> it's alright. I stopped at the grocery store and bought some groceries on the way home. So I wouldn't waste a few gallons of gas. Gas is going back up again. I went to the post office. I had a package to mail and the post office is closed. I forgot it was Martin Luther King's birthday. Alright, let's see if I'm anywhere close to three and a half inches. Where's my ruler? Alright. <clears throat> I am right at three and a half inches. And I try to make it three and a half all the way around. is another thing I try to measure 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 your circle so it's three and a half all the way around and I'm there okay I'm gonna back stitch two stitches now we're gonna add the fabric all right Here's my star shape. Can you see my star shape? You can hardly see it. My stitches are pretty darn good. This is the back. Pretty good. Alright. Now we're going to pick a spot. We're going to pick a spot. Okay. Pick a spot. Alright, here's the working cord and the fabric is upside down. Now you want to turn it upside down. Pick you a spot where you want the print. And now you want to trace around your coaster. Do I need to zoom out for this? Probably. 
Probably. So what's the weather where you're at? It's supposed to be almost 60 here, but it's going to get in the 30s tonight. It was 20... What was it? 27 last night? It was cold this morning. I had to turn my heat on. I'm in North Carolina. Alright, so I cut a little bit can you see that? Let me see if I can get to this darker line. I think they call it a scant, but you want it to be um, a little bit smaller than your rope. All you want to do is make it big enough to tuck between your rope. If you do it any bigger, the color of your fabric will show. Um... I'm just eyeballing it. Alright, where'd my line go? There we go. And then I cut a little tail. Now, if you remember, I traced a little bit past my tail with the rope. And I cut a little splinter. Alright, I'm finished with that fabric. Okay, here we go. So what do you think about um, making kits? Alright, let me read my comments. Hey Francine, how are you? Mary. What's the name of your artistry shop? It's called Shrill. S-W-R-I-L-S. -S. Shrills. Somebody had my name already, so I had to come up with something. I was making some weird jewelry and kind of used the name of the jewelry for that. <laughs> it's S-W-R-I-L-S. -S. Don't ask me what it means. It's cool. You'll find me. I'm the only one with that name. <laughs> But it's not Etsy. Right now I just have some pocketbooks that I made on there. I had coasters and bowls on there. Alright, so we're going to make sure it's the same all the way around with the hang off. And you're going to lift your rope up. And you just push it down and hold it. Let me zoom in a little bit. And then you zigzag it together. And then you're going to make sure ain't nothing moved. You can spray adhesive on it if you need to do that. Some people um, spray the, or I mean put the pell on. But it stays in place for me. It kind of sticks like it would on felt for me. Alright, lift up. Make sure everything's still in place. Like slide it off the edge, hold it, lift up, slide it, <clears throat> lift up, slide it. There's a smoothie um, shop not too far from me. She went to a craft bazaar that I was at and asked me if I'd be interested in putting some of my coasters in her um, in her store. And I was like, ooh, okay. But she wants me to do, like, beachy, beachy coasters. All right, so I cut my rope. I have enough for making bracelets. Save your pieces of rope so you can make some of those bracelets. I made a video on the bracelets. Save your rope. Alright. Alright, I got the Walmart rope, so I'm going to cut out some of the... <laughs> I can't talk. Cut out some of the polyfill or whatever you call this stuff. Nylon. Alright, so now I lift my foot up. My needle is down. We're going to take it and curl it inward. <clears throat> We're going to 
get it stuck in there as far as we can get it. Sometimes you got to do a little poking. <coughs> Put the foot back down. I use these uh, scissors. They're flat and narrow enough for me to just push up against the side here. It, it works perfect for me. I do have a pokey tool, but I rather I like the way these work better. And you zigzag, back stitch. Okay, now you want to connect this part to this part. So you're gonna do it again. Make sure it's see. I didn't even have my scissors under the foot. It was just holding it. All right, so that part's done. Cut my strings. Okay. All right, this is what it's looking like right now. Here's my ending. That's the other side. You see what I mean about the fabric coming through? If you cut it too wide it'll show through more so all right stitching and ditch you want to put your sew machine on a straight stitch center your needle and turn your project upside down all right i usually start right here and i want my needle to go right in the in the ditch Right in the ditch. Here, right there. You want to follow that line. So you're going to go over top of your zigzag stitch. Everybody got that? <laughs> I think I got it. It's just a matter of when they want me to start. Um, you're back in. Granddaughter moved to Raleigh. Okay, my kids live in Chapel Hill. So you they're not too far from where my kids live. All right, let me see. You think that's a good idea? I was thinking, you know, hey, why not? Might be a good present for somebody to send to somebody. All right, here we go. So I got my needle. I got it aimed right right in that second row. Here, let me see if I can show you with it. So I got the needle put right there. So I'm going to follow this row. That second row. So you're going to stitch right over top of your zigzag. Alright, let's see if I can do this without getting cross-eyed. Here we go. Needle goes right in the crack of the two ropes. Or the valley or the ditch. And you can go slow. I usually go a little bit faster. But can you see where the needle's going? Right in the middle. You can do it on top. Um, I think there's a special foot that you can do stitch in the ditch. But if you just follow that line, my line is right there. So I can, I have one of them see-through um, toes. So my line is right there. So I'm trying to keep my eye right on that. So I'm on the third row here. Go a little bit faster. I usually slow down when I get to closer to the center or when my eyeballs need a break. But if you stop, put your needle down so you can see where you're, you're at, you know what I mean? When you come back or look back at it.
Because if you go off track, it'll show on the other side. Alright, I don't know what row I'm on, but I'm still trucking. It's fairly easy, you just gotta pay attention. And... I'm gonna need a break in a second. <laughs> It's pretty though when you're done. All right. The center, I tend to slow down. But you can start from the center and go outward too. I like going outward to the center. On. I'll check the comments in a second. All right, I'm getting there. You keep a, a nice pace. All right, I'm gonna try to slow down a tidbit slower here. All right, I kind of lost where I was at. There we go. <laughs> I didn't quite make it to the very center, but, uh, oh, maybe I did. Oh, I did like a cute little heart. <laughs> hey, I might be teaching, but Laurel is not perfect. It gave a little heart. You see it? I got a squiggle, and I got a little bitty heart. How in the world did I do that? I have not a clue. But that's what it looks like stitching in the ditch. And this is what my back looks like. You see how it pulled your zigzag stitches inward? And this will tighten up your um, bottom too. So you can do the bottom of your bowls the same way. Ta-da! We did one stitch in the ditch. And this one, this one went, wee. <laughs> well, there we go. That's what they look like. That's what they look like. Here, let me zoom out. So we got four coasters all done. Um, I usually do sets of four. Um, I'll do more if people order them, but. All right, so this one's what I'm going to do next. I think I did a video on, on this one. I can't remember if it was on here or Facebook. Anyway, I did one row of stitching in a ditch. And that gives it a, a nice finished look also. Can you see that? <clears throat> so we'll do this one next. All right, I have scraps of fabric. I got these scraps from this lady. Alright, so I'm going to use this. Where is my rope? My rope. Hmm, what did I do with the rope? Jeez. Here it is. Alright. I push out the filler. I usually cut about an inch or less. Just cut it off and push your outer cotton back over top. And then I'll take and put my fingernail. It gives you a tighter uh, coil by cutting the filler out. And you don't have all those little sparklies showing. Alright, so I usually curl it for about an inch. 
Let my pen go. Then I put a pen in it. And then one pen, you can do more pens, but it, it holds. I can bead on it and it stays there. All right, here we go. One more. Let's see what the comments. Good idea. Okay. Yeah, I got some pretty um, batik fabrics. I think they would be pretty to, for the fabric. And then I could do plain ones too and just have them use their own fabric. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Alright, now we're going to do a star shape. Straight stitch. I usually try to start in the middle. Or I mean, yeah, center. Take my pin out. Go to the last row. And then I'll turn it. You want to put your needle down if you're new at it. Um, that'll keep you in place. Alright, here we go. Back stitch. Here, I turn my sewing machine so you can see better. Alright, so I back stitched to the last row and now I'm going to turn it just a little bit and go this way. We're going to go frontward. But you can do an X or um, the T shape. A lot of people go back and forth a few times. Some do the satin stitch. It's all in what you want to do. But I think finding the star shape connects all my ropes, rows of rope, so you don't have those little peekaboo holes. You want to start with a nice sturdy base, right? Alright, so now this is going to be my last one. I'm going to back stitch all the way and then I'm going to turn it to start zigzagging. Turn it. Position it. Give me some rope. Alright, three and a half inches. That's what I usually do before I put the centerpiece down or the fabric. Oh, Laurel, put it on zigzag. There we go. Looks like I'm going to need some bobbin in a minute. I might have enough to do this coaster. Yeah, the first couple rounds just go slow. I have my speed on my sewing machine set in medium. A medium speed. Some machines um, have speed control, some don't. Alright, so I'm going to go in a circle till I get three and a half inches. Get this little kink out. And if you notice, I, I usually hold my rope instead of, sometimes I'll do it this way, but most of the time I'll start and I'll hold it like that. And it just keeps it, you know, snug and lets it relax to the position that it is curved to. Alright, I should be getting close to three and a half inches. Maybe. Alright, measure, measure. Yep. And then I measure again in a few minutes. Make sure it's three and a half all the way around. Three and a half all the way around. A 
sometimes you can go a little bit too far and then you'll have one coaster bigger than the other back stitch two stitches take it off we're going to do the same process as we did the other one fabric upside down working cord to the right you're going to flip it over and you're going to position it to where you want it and trace around it yeah i like the sewing machine too because it's got a, a like a table front sort of and i can my ink pen i think is getting ready to run out Right. Now, if you're using a darker fabric, I would use a chalk pencil or uh, one of them Taylor chalks, but I can see it. All right, here's my circle. Right there's the little extra rope that was hanging off. That's where I cut my little um, tail. I usually cut right on this line. And then I'll just a scant, I think the quilters call it. It might be smaller than a scant. But just, you know, enough to tuck between your rope. I think it's smaller than your rope. Alright, here is where you want to cut your tail. That tail serves me two purposes. It shows me where I started and where I stopped. And it just sec uh, secures that, um, where'd it go? <laughs> I can't find it. There it is. Alright. And then I'll put it right there where my rope ended. Make sure everything is level. Same hang off all the way around. And then I'll put my finger right there and then I'll lift up and tuck it under. And then I'll lift my rope up. And then I'll put it underneath here. Put it on zigzag, Laurel. Okay, it's on zigzag. Lift up. Push and roll it off. Zigzag. Ziggy zag, ziggy zag. Make sure it stayed in place. Lift up. Now, if you needed to, you could also um, pin your rope going around. It use, the fabric usually stays in place for me. It kind of sticks like it would on felt. Every once in a while, I have to come right here and give it a little tug, but not too often. Okay, make sure this is out of the way. Make sure it all goes under and between. Am I still zoomed in? Yeah. Okay, needle down. And now I'm going to cut about an inch. It might be a little more than an inch. Okay. Cut the filler out. I pull and push. And then I'll grab it. Cut it off. With my needle down, my project is not going to move. Okay, now we're going to lift the foot up. Pull your outer skin of your rope cotton all right now you want to curl it inward and tuck it in that little crevice put your foot you're gonna turn it 
put your foot down, grab your tool. I'm just pushing up against it so it's snug. Back stitch. Now I want to connect this part to this part. I like leaving a little bitty hole because that's usually where I tie them all together or put a price tag. Just a little FYI for your information. Um, but yeah, you can just run a string through it and tie all four of them together. That's the way I like to do it. Alright, I got strings in there. Here's the back. Here's the front. There's my ending. Alright, now we're going to do the one row of stitch in the ditch. Alright, so I like to start right here where the loop is. And I am going to start right there. That's where my needle is going to go in. So right, right here. Not on this one. The next one in. Does that help? Alright, here we go. Straight stitch. Center my needle. And I'm going to be stitching that second row. Not the outer one, not this one, but right here. So I'm going to do one complete round. Stitching it in the ditch again. Just one row. You can do two rows. I've done two rows before. Looks good. You could also do two of the plain outer. It's your coaster. You're the designer. Alright, so I'm back to where I started. Two stitches back. Bump, bump, bump. And we're done. Easy peasies, y'all. I usually charge $20 a set of four. And if I do a bowl to match, I usually sell that for 30 And it's usually a trinket bowl size. There's my stitch in the ditch. One row. I know some of y'all probably creeping up because of the honeybees. <laughs> and there you go. We got two of them done. So what y'all think? So I do kits. And put them on my Etsy shop. Mm, what else do I got here? I don't know I'm, if I'm going to keep that piece or not. I think I will. It might come in handy. Might come in handy. I'm folding my fabric back up. Um, got the bees done. I do need to make one more of these. This one I made too small. All right. I still got to do two more honeybees. Alright. See what I mean? When you walk away and come back. And you didn't measure it right. <laughs> I made one too small. So I got to do one exactly the same. When I do something like that. I double check my measurements. For me to check my measurements. I look to see where my fabric is and I will see I made it bigger than three and a half that's why yep see that so that's why that came out bigger and this one the smaller one 
You, see, you can see where your fabric is. Measure. This was right at three and a half. So that's what I did wrong. So I got a small one. So if you ever goof and you made one too small, but these are one or a half a round bigger. I think it's a half a round bigger. Ain't no telling where my mindset was that day. <laughs> but see, see how much. This one is the normal size that I usually do. A piece of fuzz. But I made these three bigger. So all I got to do is one more. Alright, now I got to make sure I do it the right size. I think I want to do a, a stitch in the ditch around this with one ring too. Uh oh, this one looks like I use white thread. And that's another boo-boo. But it'll be alright, won't it? Nobody looks at the bottom. <laughs> alright, let me see. I did this one. That one's got the stitch in the ditch. But anytime you make one coaster and walk away from it for a little while, go back and measure. Measure this part. Just to make sure that you didn't make one bigger than the other. Sometimes your rope uh, can be a little bit thicker than another one too all right what's the other one i got here this one y'all i got this fabric at the dollar tree a couple years ago isn't it cute i did one round of stitch in the ditch so i need two more of these so definitely um if you walk away for any amount of time, make sure you measure from here to here to where your fabric is. And make sure your measurement's the same, because otherwise you'll have one bigger than the other. Just an FYI. You're welcome. Hey, it happens to me sometimes. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm thinking about doing the um, coaster sets. Um, or kits, I mean. Kits. Coaster set kits. So, I would leave... Um, I would measure my rope out. I think I'll cut it. I don't know how I want to do it. If I want to... Just measure all the rope. No, I probably should do it. Cut the rope for each size. I don't know. It was just a thought. Um, but yeah. And then have a, a referral to come back to the video to watch it. That's what I'll do. Alright, ladies. I needed to make a video. Um, I do have one of those circular knitting machines. I kind of want to, um, do a video on me using that. Uh, I got it for Christmas. My sister sent me some money for Christmas, and I wanted one of those. So, that's what I got for myself for Christmas. <laughs> um, it's one of those crank kind. <clears throat> so, if you want see some videos on that it's easy you can make slippers headbands you can make toboggans and it is cold and if you crochet and you have a bunch of um yarn or knit that's one way to use it up i have found though um mainstay yarn doesn't work too hot on the, the one i got um, 
It likes the multicolor, but it don't like the solid colors. So, I guess I'll have to crochet with that yarn. But it does like the multicolor. And the thinner um, yarn. Anyway, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a video on that too. And I've been playing with some different stitches on it. Alright, love y'all. Have a good day. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. <laughs> and I'll see you on the next video or on the group. Love y'all. And don't forget, put a like, comment, and share. And if you hadn't subscribed, give me a subscribe. That helps me um, get my channel out. And if I reach 10,000, I'll start getting paid. But I'm at uh, 1,000 right now. So thank you for joining me. I like helping people. Love y'all. Au revoir. Goodbye.